Hi, my name is Mozart Lewis, and I'm a developer engineer, developer relations engineer advocating for Android camera. Today, we're going to talk about improving your social experience quality with Android camera. Now, most of this talk assumes that you use the Android camera 2 framework and within your app, and you know concepts like the camera manager and the camera device, as this isn't a getting started guide. And features here will also be available in Camera X sometime in the future. So let's get started. Camera is at the forefront of social. Camera is such an important part of the mobile device, and users are always interacting with the camera, especially in the context of social. In fact, we have over 60% of images and videos are taken from apps other than the native camera app. So you can think of these as like social apps that we know and love today. Users are also spending an average of over two hours on social apps daily, and most of the apps contributing to that time have camera at the forefront. Because of this, and because of how important camera is to the ecosystem, Android has doubled down on things that matter most with camera, especially in the context of quality and performance. We want to assure users are able to take the highest quality photos and videos possible and make every single pixel count. We also want developers to be able to ensure the best performance and apps and make them fast, responsive, and good for everyday social and non-social needs. So we've taken feedback from developers on exactly what they needed for, from camera, and we've landed ma major changes in Android 13. Today's agenda, we're going to explore some major updates within the camera ecosystem, covering topics around capture quality and performance. And we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at how to implement these things into your app today. So let's talk about one of the easiest ways to visually improve the quality of your video, and that's HDR video capture. In Android 13, we introduced high dynamic range video capture, which provides higher contrast and more colors to encoded video. Your camera capture will be able to produce much brighter videos and more saturated colors compared to SDR. Normally, high-end features like this are made available within the user's native camera apps, but what we've done is made this available to any developer that wants to tap into this great feature. With HDR comes 10-bit color capture as well, which enables you to capture a little over 1 billion colors instead of just shy of 17 million. This should make colors more, this should make colors in videos smoother and more consistent and avoid the dreaded banding that can occur when colors are represented incorrectly. So here are a couple, here are the, there are a couple steps on getting started and integrating HDR with, within your app. And the first step is to check for 10-bit dynamics range support. So the first thing we'll do here, so uh, the first thing we must do here is use our camera manager class so that we can query some characteristics. The characteristic that we're going to query here is the, re the request available capabilities. This will return a list of capabilities that the camera uh, that, that is given here is able to do. Now, the capability that we're looking for is this flag here called request available capabilities dynamic range 10 bit. I know it's really long, but <laughs> that's the actual string there. Now, great. Once you return that, if that's true, we know that your device supports 10 bit. And the next thing we want to do now is try and get a supported HDR profile. There's many available, right? So, in doing this, uh, you do the same thing. You take the camera manager and you query a characteristic based off the camera ID. That characteristic in this case is request available dynamic range profiles. This will give you a list of profiles, HDR profiles that are available within the device, of dynamic range profiles available in the device. Now, once you have that, in this case, in this example, we're requesting for the dynamic range profile of HLG10. The reason why we're doing this here we actually, in this case, don't need to do this because in Android 13, HLG 10 is the minimum required profile for capture and playback to provide better consistency across devices within the entire ecosystem. So this means that if you have 10-bit support within your app, then you must have HLG. 
If the device has 10-bit support, then HLG is definitely supported. But we add this piece here because you may want to support a different HDR profile, like HDR10 or HDR10+. So we have 10-bit support. We have an HDR profile. So let's actually set up an HDR session. Here, we're going to, like normally, we would use and set up an output, an output configuration for every target surface. In here, you'll see that we have a new flag in the configuration. The flag is called config.dynamicRangeProfile. It's here that we can set up our profile that we checked for that we assured that we have. So in this case, HLG10. From there, what we'll do is configure our session as normally we would, as any chemical developer would, and we create a capture session. And this is setting up our HDR capture. So we have our session set up with the dynamic range profile. And now we need to actually encode the video into a file. So here, we, the first thing we want to do is create our media format instance with a width, uh, a height, and a format. And in this case, we're going to use HEVT, which I'll go into in the, in the meantime. Now, we have a lot of flags that we need to set to do this correctly. Right in this format uh, dot set integer, we'll call this many times with a lot of these keys, and here they are. You have four things to set up to get HDR properly set up. You need the key format, the key profile, the key color transfer, as well as the key color stand the color standard. So in this case, in this example, our key for our color format would be the format surface. Our key profile will be HEVC profile main ten. Our color transfer will be HLG, and our color standard will be BT2020. Once again, there is multiple options. You can mix and match depending on what your device supports. Great, so we have HDR fully set up in terms of capturing HDR video within your app. And I encourage everyone to stick around for the next talk around HDR 10-bit video to go from end to end to capture, to playback, and sharing. Great. So our next topic today we're going to talk about is stream use cases, which can help optimize your camera stream for common scenarios in which you'd use your camera for. So why do we need this? Why is this important? Well, before Android 13, under the hood, the camera didn't really know why you're, you want to use it. So for instance, let's say you wanted to capture an image. And maybe you wouldn't want to prioritize image quality. Well, the camera device didn't really know that ahead of time. So there was nothing that the man device manufacturer could do to optimize uh, for, that, for that particular use case. To go, uh, how does this benefit the developers, though? Well, when you're in session creation time, the camera device will understand what you're wanting to create this instance for. So for instance, now, device manufacturers can optimize for the best performance or the best quality depending on why you're using this camera stream. So you think of an example as if I'm just trying to take a picture, I want the highest quality, every pixel that can count. And so now the manufacturer can say, OK, we're going to optimize for this use case scenario. Whereas in, if you're doing just, let's say, in-app in, in, in analysis and just using the viewfinder, you may not need the highest quality, and you can then optimize for performance instead. So here's a list of some of the, deep, uh, the predefined keys. Right now, we have default, which is covering all existing behavior. We have preview, which is recommended for viewfinder or in-app image anal analysis, or like AR, augmented reality, things like that. Still capture, which and video recording, which is pretty self-explanatory. Video call, which is recommended for long-running camera sessions where power drain can become a concern. You have preview video still. Now, this one is recommended by Google for, man for apps that are trying to use the one stream for everything. So if you're using the one stream to capture images, using the one stream to capture video and display it to the uh, viewfinder, use preview video still. We also have vendor software. Uh, Samsung or any other OEM to be able to have their own particular predefined cases. <laughs> All right, so here's a quick demonstration of what it may look like. This is a little dramatized, but if you set a stream, let's say, to a preview, if your stream key use case is preview, you may notice that there's a jump in frames per second, and it may make the viewfinder feel a lot more real time and more realistic because this is optimized for performance. 
This increase in performance, though, may lead to a loss of quality and you know, a less desirable image and maybe not really great for video. Whereas this view still capture and display that stream on the viewfinder, you'll see that it's like almost the highest resolution photo that the sensor can produce every single pixel, but the stream is not really expected to maintain preview-like frame rates. So you may see it's becoming very laggy and it may not be something that you'd want to use for the viewfinder. And so you would use this case for just the image uh, capture stream. So, so the first thing we want to do to get this implemented is check if your stream use case is supported. Everything must be supported by the device manufacturer in order for you to use it within your app. So we use our camera manager and we, que we query a camera characteristic. And in this case, we're gonna query the scalar available stream use cases. So in this case, we'll go in here, well, let's say we created this method and we wanna use one of these use cases, we put into a function like this to check, is this available? So once we've checked that the stream use case we're looking for is available, we wanna now set that up during configuration. So it's kind of like the same situation as before. Now we're going to use the example preview video still here. What we'll do is for each output configuration, we have a new flag called uh, config stream use case, and you will set up that use case to the configuration, and that's pretty much it. You will then continue as normal. And that will help your camera stream for the specific use case that you're using it for be optimized by the device manufacturer. Great. Now, let's talk about one of my favorite acronyms, which is WASAWIG, which is called what you see is what you get. Now, you may think, what is this and why do we even have this? Um, this, is, but this is for preview stabilization. So now, if you're familiar with camera APIs, you'll already know that we already have stabilization. So what does this do? Uh, if you haven't noticed that there's some cases when you use a multi-stream, where let's say you have one stream directing towards the viewfinder and one stream dedicated to the encoder, what may happen is that what's being seen inside the viewfinder is not equivalent to what gets captured in the encoder. So sometimes that'll result into like a sudden crop into the image or a sudden, uh, there's more viewfinder, than, there's more in the captured image than what was in the viewfinder, which is unexpected, which is not really good for apps that you, know, you want to see what you get. Like you saw what you saw and you didn't get what you wanted to get in that case. So we've implemented preview stabilization, which helps avoid this issue by applying the same exact st stabilization that is going to the video encoder to the actual preview, which means that it can crop in, crop out, whatever it may, whatever it may be doing to the encoder as well, will be applied to the preview, which will give you the what you see is what you get feeling, which is really important for things like social apps, where they usually will use just one stream in this case. So, Implementing this is actually really easy. Like everything else, we need to query a characteristic of the camera and see if it supports the control available video stabilization modes. Once you get this list, you will be able to then check if we are able to support control video stabilization mode preview stabilization. Now, once you get this, if this is true, you can set it up in your builder with the capture request, and you'll be able, and then you have preview stabilization happening within your app, just like that. Great, that's the only thing you need. This, this pretty much this flag and checking it within and setting it within your builder, and you will be up and running with preview stabilization. So, the last thing we'll talk about today is camera extensions. Device manufacturers can expose special capabilities like night mode, bokeh, HDR, and third party, through third party, to third party developers through camera extensions. Developers can use either the Camera 2 API or the Camera X API to enable camera extensions, which, is, which are implemented by the device manufacturer. For, the example, for this example, you can see how Snapchat used the night extension to brighten up a scene and take a better image under low light conditions on Pixel devices. And you can see how I was able to get a nice bokeh depth of field effect on the Samsung Galaxy S22 that supports extensions. Now, we're excited to say that over 160 devices now support at least three or more extensions, and device manufacturers are hard at work implementing and supporting extensions on more and more devices. 
Here's our list of extensions that are currently available. You have Night, which is useful for low light conditions. HDR, which is good for high dynamic range still capture. Auto, which automatically selects one of these other extensions based off of the incident environment and what the device manufacturer determines at that time. So you can imagine setting up auto and let's say it's really low light conditions, they may then say, okay, we're gonna switch to the night extension under the hood. We also have Boca Depth of Field, which is a focused subject with a blurry background, and face retouch. Like everything else in camera, we must query and assure that the camera is able to support the, an extension. So with a method like this, you can check if a specific extension is enabled based off of the camera ID. So let's see an example of creating a se uh, session for the bokeh extension. The first thing we'll do is check if the extension is supported with our previous method. So in this case, we'll get the camera device ID, which may be like the back camera, our camera manager, and let's say in this case, we're looking for the bokeh extension. If this is supported, then we'll be able to continue in this function. Then we'll set up our camera extension session that state callback. This is where you can call the on configure and on configure failed if everything works well, right? And one of the key differences here is that we don't create a normal session configuration. We create a extension session configuration instead with the extension callback and everything else available there. And when you're calling it on your camera device, what you will use instead is create extension session instead of just create um, se session, create session with your configuration. So let's recap. Today we talked about HDR video, which can improve the color, brightness, and contrast of your videos. The camera stream use cases, which can optimize you for the camera for specific use cases. Preview stabilization, which assures your users get exactly what they saw in the viewfinder. And camera extensions, which is access to special capabilities from the manufacturer of the device. Now, there's so much more, actually, that we weren't able to necessarily cover today, like cam concurrent camera, jitter reduction, updates to camera X, but we encourage you to follow the links here um, to be able to view all of these extra updates. And we're, the camera team is looking for as much feedback back as you can give us for the next version of Android. So we'd love for you to just keep in contact with us and let us know what we're doing that we can improve the platform and camera experience within your app. Thank you. Thank you.